Hey everybody, Marcos Viegas here with Abel Sanchez, the trainer of Gennady Golovkin, who fights this Saturday on HBO in a fight being dubbed Mexican style, in which we all think it's going to be a great fight. We all think that it, it might end up in a knockout, and we all think it might be a fight of the year. What are your expectations for this fight? I anticipate a, a difficult fight. Marco is very experienced. Uh, Marco also punches. So uh, I anticipate a knockout one way or the other, whether it's Marco going down or Gennady going down. I think that they're going to be in front of each other. Gennady's style uh, dictates that uh, you better fight. And if you don't, uh, you're going to get knocked out. So if Marco does, wow, what a dramatic night. No, looking at Marco and he's trained by Roberts, and you've known Roberts uh, since he was little, right? Since Five he was years a little old, yeah. kid. Yeah. Um, do you see Robert train his guys the way how he fought? Do you see kind of see that? No, I think no. Robert's a very good coach. Robert understands that everybody's got different qualities, everybody's got different pluses and minuses. I think the Robert gets the most out of his guys, but I think the biggest asset for Marco, as far as Robert is concerned in this fight, is that Robert's been there. Robert's been a champion. Robert understands exactly what it feels like to be in the position that he's in. And by talking to him, he's going to convince Marco that he can. Uh, our job, Gennady's job, is to convince him that he can't. But uh, Robert, I think, is training Marco the way that uh, Marco needs to be trained to be the best that he can be. You know, what I was trying to get to that question as well, too, is because you've known him for so long and you've seen his fights, and uh, if he has, I guess, some of that rubs off on Rubio, it gives you that much more of an understanding of, of Rubio and what he could bring to the table. Uh, yes, but Rubio's going to bring that to the table against other guys. When he does that against Golovkin, no matter what he does against Golovkin, he's going to have to deal with, first of all, Gennady's jab. Uh, second of all, cutting off the ring. Uh, and I don't think there's been a guy that cuts off the ring as well as Gennady in the last 15, 20 years. So uh, if he can deal with that and Robert can get him around that, then yes, maybe Marco can make it a fight. But I doubt nobody else has been able to do it. I doubt that Marco can cut, uh, get away from Gennady when he's cutting off the ring or even be able to withstand the onslaught. I'm not going to say it's one shot, but just the onslaught of punches coming at him. Not necessarily hard ones, but just the onslaught of just continuous punching. You know, Gennady sold uh, a lot of tickets for this fight, uh, I believe 9,000 bleacher seats. How is he handling, I guess, the, the growing fame that he's having? How, how do you see him? He's very thankful to his fans. He's very thankful for Southern California, uh, the StubHub Center that was able to accommodate the, the, the rest of the fans. Um, he understands that he's 32 years old. He understands that uh, he's got a responsibility to his fans, and, and he's been doing that in previous fights. So this is just a culmination of all the other fights combined into one to, to, and to make the anticipation to the fans that they, they're going to get that kind of show that night. And if they get that kind of show, they're going to go away happy. If he wins this fight, he's the mandatory for the 160 title that's being held by Miguel Cotto. Cotto is rumored to fight uh, Canelo, which is a great fight, uh, but I know for you guys, for the team, that might be a little frustrating not to get that fight right away because of that other fight that could or could not happen. No, it's not really frustrating. No, Gennady's been on the on the HBO, uh, what, two years, I think, yeah. uh, on the U.S. market, two years. So, no, it's not. A lot of these other guys, Cotto's been around for how long? Uh, you know, <laughs> Canelo's been around even longer at that level, where uh, uh, HBO level. So, I think the WBC uh, mandated that if Cotto fights in May, who he fights Canelo, whomever he fights, the winner of that fight has to fight the winner of this fight in the fall. They, be, they become the mandatory. If Gennady wins and Canelo or Cotto would have to fight, or Cotto or whomever would have to fight uh, Golovkin. So uh, 2015 may be a big year, not only for us, but for boxing, because those are the kind of fights the fans want to see. If we get that pay-per-view, the Cotto, Canelo, and then either or Cotto, Canelo versus Gennady, yeah, that'd be a really good year for boxing. Oh my God. <laughs> Imagine, 2015 could be the year. <laughs> and then if we get this mayweather Pacquiao fight. <laughs> It could be the year, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You know, isn't it cool to see him turn from prospect to pretty much you building him up into now potentially a star? Isn't that a cool feeling to, to know, like, hey, you know, look, look what I did with this guy. I know you've done it with other fighters, but with him as well? You know what it is, but you know what's most cool about it for me is the method in which he's done it. 
he's still the humble, he's still the nice man, still smiling, still not talking trash. Uh, I think that the fans are tired of all that, uh, at least I am as a fan, tired of all the trash talking, of the bad mouthing, of the, you know, this kid comes in, does his job, and, and, and is thanking everybody and apologetic to everybody for maybe not doing what they expected. And, and I think that's, that's refreshing. Uh, it's refreshing for me to see somebody like that, and it's, and it's been fun being along the ride, but more fun just watching him do it the way he's been doing it. And on a final note, the night of the fight, when they meet, who walks through whose punches? <laughs> you know, that's really the real question for me. Who's the bigger puncher and who could withstand most of it? I've said it in the past that there's no one from 154 to 160 that will go 12 rounds with Gennady. There's nobody stronger than Gennady at 160 pounds. And if Marco is smart, smart enough to stay away from his uh, power, then the fight may go some rounds. But if he's not, then it's going to be a quick night. Abel, we can't wait. It's going to be a good fight regardless. Thank you very much. Here with Abel Sanchez, Marcos Viegas here in Santa Monica.